on day five of the present round of the farmer protest along the Punjab Haryana border, the situation remains pretty tense. Now, the march that's been dubbed Delhi Chalo or March to Delhi began on the 13th of February. The protesting farmers have refused to budge from their demands, and the epicenter of this more of the ongoing farm agitation is at the Shambhu border. Thousands of farmers have been protesting against the central government here and significantly three rounds of talks between the farm unions and also the government have failed and the fourth round of talks are scheduled at 5 p.m. on Sunday. As of now, the leaders and farmers of 250 unions are taking part in the protests. The Bharatiya Kisan Union or the BKU will also be joining the protests as a huge gathering of farmers is expected on Sunday. And about two people have reportedly so far been killed during these protests. One is said to be a Haryana Railway Police personnel and another is a protesting farmer. A 52-year-old sub-inspector of the Haryana Railway Police passed away while on duty due to his deteriorating health conditions. A 78-year-old farmer from Punjab's Gurdaspur district died due to a heart attack at the Shambhu border protest site in the early hours today. The several farmers and journalists have also been injured as the protesters clashed with the police in order to break through the barricades. Now, the agenda of the ongoing protests is to press for the pending demands that have been brought forth by the farmers and the farm unions, which include a law on minimum support price or MSV for crops and also loan waivers by the central government for the farmers. The fourth round of talks between the farmers and the government representatives are to take place in Jalandhar in Punjab on Sunday. And to give us more perspective in terms of what of course is unfolding at this moment, we are being joined by Mr. Devinder Sharma, who is a distinguished food and trade policy analyst. He's also an award-winning Indian journalist, a writer, thinker and a researcher and is joining us live from Chandigarh. Now, Mr. Sharma, this is a pretty important moment in terms of what is unfolding where the farmers are sitting on protest again. They are saying that the government has not fulfilled their demands so far. What do you make of these farmers' demands? Well, let's be very clear that the farmers are protesting uh, to see that their income goes up. In fact, they deserve to get an assured income. And uh, the demand for the or from the farmers is that uh, the minimum support price uh, should be a legal mechanism, which means uh, uh, the farmers uh, say that what they want is actually the 23 crops for which minimum support price is announced uh, every year in India. Uh, you know, out of these 23 crops, only two crops, wheat and paddy, are effectively procured by the government and uh, to some extent cotton and pulses. But uh, by and large, uh, farmers uh, remain dependent on the markets. And markets, as we all know, on an average, provide 30% less uh, prices to farmer compared to the minimum support price that is announced so which means that the msp is primarily or basically on the paper mm -hmm. and they they it has no control over the over the trading that takes place so the farmers are demanding msp to be legalized that is their primary demand and when the protest happened two years back in 2020-21 uh, the three contentious laws were withdrawn but uh, the farmers had demanded at that time also that uh, minimum support price should be made a legal uh, instrument now this is where the the the, the talks are also struck you know between the government and the right. farmer leaders government is saying that you know it is not possible we will need more time and so on farmers are saying you already had more time because for the last two years nothing has moved on that front right. and uh, so they are now uh, pitching for a, a, a higher price and i think that is very significant for the farming community uh, now mr sharma you know just to play the devil's advocate here the government will turn around and say that it is not possible to assure a minimum support price for all the 22 23 different crops that the farmers are demanding this for because at the end of the day it all boils down to economics how do you assure a minimum support price for the, the crops that the farmers say that they want to grow is this fiscally a prudent demand on behalf of the farmers well i think it is it is definitely a prudent demand from the farmers because what is being uh, appearing in the media in India, I think, is all uh, a propaganda and is inflated figures being tossed around with no basis where the figures are coming from. Now, what is important to understand is when you say fiscal de fiscal position will be taken care of or mm -hmm. fiscal position will not deteriorate, let me tell you that Crisil, 
the the uh, you know uh, the, uh, you know those who do uh, the, the analytical company crisel right. has come out with a study which says that if the government was to pay the pr- uh, difference in the minimum support price and what is the market price today you know for 16 crops out of the 23 the uh, the expenditure in 2023 marketing year was only rupees 21000 crore which which tells us that all the figures being tossed around in the india were just hyped uh, to create a fear psychosis right. now if crisel report is correct i i see no reason why the government uh, cannot make uh, msp a legal instrument why it is also important let's be very clear that only 14% farmers in india get minimum support price mm-hmm. 86% farmers are dependent on the markets which which pay them a distressed price or pay them a low price which as a, and and when the price uh, let's say is legalized uh, you know the the advantage would be that uh, the, you know more the money in the hands of farmers would mean more the money they're going to spend in the markets all right now, and that would mean a, create a huge demand all right and I, I that will you know, Mr. Sharma, let, 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 let me just button there and you said that there is this report that you quoted uh, assuming that is true but also the timing of this protest the fact that it is happening just a couple of months before the general elections a lot of people are saying that this is a protest that has been motivated by politics do you agree with that well i don't know why when it comes to farmers we start talking about politics we you know in a country where even awards are given uh, looking at uh, the 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 closeness or the, the the coming elections you know then we don't question but when the farmers do it i think they are also you now very intelligent savvy and they t- take on the strategy kind of a decision making what is wrong in that you know logically they say that there is a no government in india considering that 55 plus percent of the population in india is dependent on farming there is no government that can keep the unhappy farmers unhappy in the country but thank you very much indeed mr sharma for joining us and getting us that perspective there vion is now available in your country download the app now and get all the news on the move